Hey guys, welcome back to Ed's Garage. Today I want to show you how to use the built-in navigation system on your Hyundai Ioniq 5 or 6 or upcoming 2024 Kona EV uh, and how to basically set it up with battery preconditioning so that when you get to your destination charger, uh, the battery is nice and warm and ready to go. So first things first, we need to get battery preconditioning enabled and set up. So let's do that first. All right. So first thing we need to do is find the setup icon. So on the Ionic 5 and 6, basically swipe to the left and you'll notice that there's a setup icon down here on the bottom right. On the Kona EV for 2024, there will be a setup box. So basically the same idea, but the layout or the look is a little bit different. But we're going to go ahead and tap setup here and then we're going to go to EV and then battery conditioning mode. And we need to make sure that battery, battery conditioning mode is enabled. So that little check box right there. And as you can see, it says maintaining, uh, sorry, maintains driving and fast charging performance by optimizing the battery temperature in cold winter temperatures. In this mode, setting a fast charging station as the destination consumes more battery energy and may shorten the driving range. It may also say winter mode here, uh, which is basically the same thing for 2022 Ionics. Uh, and if they've had their uh, system updated, it may still say winter winter conditioning mode or winter mode, um, but it'll also add the ability to pre-warm the battery on your way to a charging station. So next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually put in the destination address for the charging station. Now I'm a big advocate for using plug share to find your charging stations. So you can of course start with that, use the plug share application. And I'm going to show you how to do that to find the station that you want to go to. And then we're going to put the address into the navigation system. Okay. So first things first, we're going to open up the plug share application, which is going to basically go right to our location. Um, so currently I've got uh, <laughs> location services turned off for some reason. Uh, but there we go. Um, so it's showing us where we are currently located. Um, and when I want to find a station in, well, obviously we're not going to find a station that's close to us. We're going to, you know, go to a destination. So let's, uh, let's zoom out a little bit here and let's say we're going to go to this one right here. So this is probably a good station to go to. And then I can hit the uh, little bar there to bring that up. It says it's a 50 kilowatt station. Now I am a little bit concerned that this station might actually not be on the Hyundai map. So let's try a different one. This, the reason being is because it's a very, very new station. Uh, so let's find one that we know has been around for a little while. Here's a couple in hope. Okay. This one I think has been around for a little while. So let's open this up. Yeah. It's, um, it's got a few, this is Electrify Canada, I believe. Yeah. It's Electrify Canada station. As you can see, it goes all the way up to 150 kilowatts. So that's good. So that that's that's a good one. All right. So now I can see that it's at 349 Fort Street in Hope, British Columbia. So let's go ahead and navigate to that using the car net up. So let's go. Let's navigate to uh, to Hope, British Columbia first. So I'm going to use the voice recognition to do that. Navigate to Hope, British Columbia. Please say the line number of the location you are. There, that Would one's you good. Like guidance to this location? Yes, we do. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go back to that navigation screen. So I can do that from here as well, pressing the nav button. And then I'm going to go to nearby points of interest, EV charging stations, near my destination. So you can see we have uh, a couple at 349 Fort Street, which is where we wanted to go and charge. Uh, so I can go ahead and choose one of these now. I don't know why exactly it has a little question mark over the 350 kilowatt option there, but I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. We know that they're both in the same place. Um, and when we actually hit that and add that um, to the roots, we're going to go add stop. So you can see we have uh, where we currently are. Uh, there's the District of Hope uh, charging station and then Hope. Um, so that's the, the city of Hope. So if I go route now, it's going to take us to the spot where we can choose which way we want to go. Uh, there's really only a couple ways there and then there we go. So it starts the guidance. So using this way to plan your route, basically now as we approach that destination, it is going to um, start to pre-warm the battery uh, and kind of get it ready for the charge. You may not actually say anything on the screen, but uh, it should do it. We have battery preconditioning set up. So as we approach there now, it, uh, it should do that. And it's just as easy as that. So now we've added that stop. It's 
put into the built-in navigation system, it should have the battery pre-warmed and ready to go when we get to that location. But there is an easier way. So rather than typing anything in or using the navigation screen or anything, we can do it all from voice recognition. So let's say we're going to Merritt, British Columbia. Uh, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the voice recognition. I'm just gonna say find a charging station in Merritt, British Columbia. So let's do that now. Find a charging station in Merritt, British Columbia. Please say the line number of the location you want to go to. Four. Would you like guidance to this location? Yes. All right. There we go. So it's now going to take us to that charging location. Now, it's 173 kilometers away. We currently have 305 kilometers of range left. Let's see what happens if we use a navigation system to find a destination outside of our range. So we're gonna go ahead and cancel this route. Navigate to Creston, British Columbia. Please say the line number of the location you want to go to. Two. Would you like guidance to this location? Yes. Here we go. So battery capacity may be insufficient to reach your destination. Would you like to stop at an EV charging station or stations? Uh, the information provided may vary according to driving environment, so yes. So there is, of course, uh, new route planning built into these systems. Um, that's as of an update back in, I believe it was May. Um, so it's going to not only plan the route, but it's also going to set up um, battery preconditioning as you go along. So it is currently set up to do so. So our first stop is going to be at a charging there station. We so if we, if we zoom all the way out, it shows we have a charging location here and a charging location here. So it works pretty well. Now, the thing that I would be a little bit concerned about, so Princeton, here we go, is actually not terribly far away. So that's actually really good. It's picked up a really nice charging station for us or charging location. And it's at a on the run station that's um, run by uh, Journey and it's at our Chevron gas stations. It's 150 kilowatts. So it's picked a really, really good uh, station to charge at. The downside of using this system is it doesn't know if that charging station is actually functional or how it rates. So, I mean, we do have an info button here, so we can go ahead and hit that and see what that brings up. Uh, Real-time station information may differ from that found at the actual station. Yeah, so that's, that's the thing. So whether or not it's actually functional, I mean, we really don't know for sure unless we look at PlugShare because there's no way to send information to the system if you're a current Hyundai owner or whatever, or if you, you know, especially if you're a different manufacturer uh, owner um, from a different, um, a different type of vehicle, we can't go and rate this station. So this system doesn't know if this station is functional or in use. It does say currently available three in use, zero out of order, zero, and you know, whether or not there's some unknown information about it. But quite frankly, that is gonna be hit or miss. I mean, it's gonna pull that information from wherever it can, uh, from Blue Link or Google. Um, but quite frankly, I don't think anything is quite as accurate as PlugShare. And that's why I would still validate that that station actually works by using PlugShare. So if you're not familiar with PlugShare, definitely get familiar with it. But if you wanna use uh, battery preconditioning, you will need to use the built-in um, navigation system to navigate to those locations. Anyway, I hope this has helped you out a little bit. Um, I know it's a little bit confusing using a couple of different software uh, to do this, but to be, con to be completely honest, I haven't found that battery preconditioning really makes that big of a difference to the point where I would have to use it. I mean, if it was like well below freezing, sure, I'd probably use it. Um, and once you kind of get used to the navigation system and how it works, um, it's probably gonna be just fine. So. Stick with PlugShare to find the locations, and um, if you want to use battery preconditioning, use your voice recognition to navigate to uh, to that station and just and just or to that location, um, and then just find a, a charging station in the area. Pick the one that you found on PlugShare. I think that's probably the easiest way to do it, or navigate using voice recognition and find a station at the city that you're going to, um, like I did earlier, saying you know find a charging station in Merritt, BC. Um, so. 
that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, if that helped you out, great. If not, sorry. Um, <laughs> please leave a comment below if you have any questions, further questions. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if this video did help you or if you found it interesting. Thank you so much. Have a great day.